Hello everyone. Thanks for tuning in on this new message. I know it's been a while since I've had one, but many things have been going on. As many of you know, we've we've been in the uh, process of opening up a, a new restaurant, and uh, thank the Lord, we finally uh, got the doors open. Uh, we've been faced with all kind of stressfulness of this experience and it's just been overwhelming. Myself and my family uh, have faced deadlines on contractors, uh, equipment, and all those things. We, we're also faced with delays on opening the doors themselves, but we understood we had to have employees trained and they had to be ready to go and not sure where the income was going to be coming from or, or how all was going to be accomplished. I mean, sure, I, I prayed, but, but I think that at times I was praying shallow, and, and I know better than this, and, and, and putting it simply, I was having a bad day. As, as a matter of fact, I was having many bad days, and I'm sure many of you do also, but while doing some Bible study, I just happened to come across um, Paul and Silas and their struggle in Acts uh, in chapter 16, and, and I believe God led me specifically to this story. So what I'd like for you to do, if you'll, if you'll take a look with me at this time, if you have your Bible, if not, just follow along, but turn your Bible to um, Acts chapter 16, and uh, let's start reading from actually verse, verse 16 also. Again, that's Acts chapter 16, and we're going to start with verse 16. Now it happened as we went into prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination, which is demonic, uh, met us, who, who brought her matters much profit by fortune-telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to a magistrate and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And, what they had laid, and once they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into the prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet to the stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Now I'm going to stop right there, and I ask may God bless the reading of his holy word. Now there's many stories and, and messages and sermons that can be derived from just this small chapter 16. Um, everything from uh, the evils of fortune telling, which is really prominent in the Bible and how we're supposed to avoid that. Um, the fact that the uh, Philippian jailer got saved uh, during all this, but I want to, I want to, I want to focus on another part of it. Um, and, and that's the fact that now notice because Paul was, uh, cast out the demon and cost this girl's boss some money, Paul and Silas were beginning to have a bad day. Okay. Can you see this part right here? Now the girl's bosses or masters, however many that may have been at the time, they're the ones that decided to, to seize Paul and Silas and, 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 and bring them to the marketplace because they were losing money. And so they decided to make a, 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 a makeshift uh, uh, court in there, and they lost. So they were stripped, and they were beaten, and their feet were put into these stocks. And, and their day had gone, can you see, from bad to worse. It all started out with the, the, the slave girl with the demonic presence in her telling everything that's going to be going on, telling everything that's going to be going on, and this aggravated Paul and Silas, okay? And that's why he knew it was demonic, because how else would she have known exactly what they were doing? 
And so therefore, after reading this scripture, for whatever reason, it dawned on me that they were having a bad day. And I felt I was having a bad day also, and bad days. Now, have you ever just had one of those days where no matter what you did, no matter what you said, no matter what you touched, it just backfired on you? And I bet many of you have. And I decided I also needed to practice my own medicine. I was quick. I was. I was awful quick to say, "Man, things just can't get any worse," but they somehow managed to. I just. I just continuously shook my head. Well, let me give you. Let me give you a couple of, of funny examples um, that I'll share with you. And I learned these from a, a pastor, Jeffrey Smead, and he gave these one time in a, in a sermon himself. And I think they're rather funny and fat and kind of fitting. There was a man in Belgium. And he was robbing a house. And he was gathering up the stuff. And he, and he heard the owner, owners coming. So he decided he'd fly out the back door. And he had the bag of loot over his shoulder and then his hand. And then running through their backyard, he, he looked up and he encountered this nine-foot fence. Or this wall. And he had to figure out a way to scale it. So he had to think fast. So he worked on it, worked on it. And he climbed and he climbed. And when he dropped down to the other side... He quickly found out he had dropped into the back of the city prison. <laughs> so yeah, I think he probably had a bad day. Um, another one told, told by the same uh, minister was this lady comes home and she sees her, her husband in the kitchen by the electric stove. Um, and he has a wire dangling by his waist and it appeared like he was shaking, like he was being electrocuted. Well, she thought for a minute, knew she needed to do something, so she picked up a board, and she intended on knocking him free from the, from the electrical current, but instead, with the, the two-by-four that she picked up, she broke his arm into two places. And it wasn't, until later, it, it wasn't until later that she realized that he had his earphones in, and he was actually kind of dancing to some tunes from uh, his iPhone. So yeah, he had a bad day also. So where am I going with all this? Well, for those who don't know, Christ, they're permanently in bad days and don't even know it. And for those that do know Christ, we can have bad days or weeks also. But in fact, if we're not serving Christ or have fallen out of his will for us, those days can really get stressful. But alas, thank God, if we confess our sins, he's faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we know that from 1 John 1, 9. That, and that tells us that. An unrighteous man, on the other hand, he doesn't have much hope of things really getting much better. In fact, in the Old Testament, you go back to Amos in chapter 5, I think it's verse 19, Amos describes an unrighteous man as one who runs from a lion, meets a bear, and then when he gets to his house, he leans on the wall in sheer exhaustion, only to have a snake bite him. Yeah, a bad day. I think so. So for anyone not ready to meet the Lord, their days will become even worse. I mean, Revelations 20.10 says they'll be tormented day and night forever. See, we can definitely say that'll be a bad day or an eternity. And even as a child of God, we can have these bad days and, and times, but we have a way to rectify this. This is what I find I had been lacking to do myself. You see, God has the last word, and his word says in Psalms 30, verse 5, weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. Amen? And again in Romans, God says all things work together for good to those who have been called according to his purpose. So you might ask, how do we, how do we fix this? And I said, I asked, how do I fix myself? Well, let's look again at our scripture that I read in Acts. What did, Pilus, what, what did Paul and Silas do? Verse 25 says, They were praising and singing hymns. Praying, praising, singing hymns. That's our victory. Our victory comes from a simple equation. Prayer plus praise equals deliverance. It's that easy. We make everything so difficult in our lives. We forget it's that easy. You know, begin, begin with a prayer, calling upon the name of the Lord. A simple prayer, nothing, nothing elaborate. You know, you can talk to Christ 
as you talk to me, as you talk to anybody else. Yes, yes, he's sovereign. Yes, he's our Lord. Yes, we bow to him. But you're just talking to him in prayer. It doesn't have to be elaborate. And, and, and you got to remember, he promises. He promises. John chapter 10, verse 27 tells us, My sheep hear my voice. And, Ma and again, in Matthew eleven thirty, My yoke is easy and my burden is light, saith the Lord. Listen, as Christians, we need to use this term on ourselves. Take it easy on yourself. I love, and so many, so many of us don't do that. We're so hard on ourselves, and, and we find every way to burden our own selves. Um, we got to give our burdens to Jesus. You know, friends, he, he's already made the sacrifice. He already paid the price. He said worry will not solve one thing. You know, there's a story, another story I heard of a son that went to jump on the bumper of his dad's truck. Um, he was going to hitch a ride and go across the yard. His dad didn't see him, and he slid down and was hanging on by the bumper, and he got dragged for several yards before his dad heard him screaming, finally. So the father stopped the truck, and he ran around behind the truck where his son was still holding a tight grip onto the bumper. And, and, he, and he could see that his son was okay, just a little scraped up on his knees and legs. But he had to ask him the obvious question. Son, why didn't you just let go? See, God must be looking at us and wondering, why didn't you just let go? Friends, don't let Satan drag you through life battered and scarred. How do you turn around a bad day? pray. When a storm comes, pray. God will lift you. Second, continue with praise to Christ. After Paul and Silas prayed, they sang hymns of praise. They prayed and trusted God. What else was left? Faith. And praise is that language of faith. The eyes of man, they, well, they tried to convince Paul and Silas, that their situation had not changed. Same way with us. Same way with us. Whenever we're having a bad day, our enemy, Satan, just tells us, ah, nothing you do is going to work. There ain't nothing to sing about. The attack of our enemy would be relentless. But through eyes of faith, they saw that God had not forsaken them. Beloved, prayer plus praise equals deliverance even though it had been a bad day up to this point, even though they were in prison, chained, in the stocks with their feet, God was with them. The same way, no matter our bad day, God is always with us. It takes faith to praise God when the day's been bad. Always takes faith. It takes faith to sing praises to the Lord for what he's done. While those around us, it doesn't look like the Lord has done anything. But once we've prayed and put our problems in God's hands, what else is there to do but praise Him? To do anything less is to suggest that either God did not hear or God does not care. If you believe He hears and you know He cares, then praise Him. Simply praise Him. As Paul and Silas sang, the prison was shaken, the doors were open, and they were delivered. Now, friends, i got to admit, when it, at all the end of that, it turns out to be a pretty good day. God was truly working all things together. Please, hold on to this supernatural truth. Prayer plus praise equals deliverance. You know, the life of a, a Christian embodies that simple truth. And now I also must simply practice what I preach. I'll pray, and I'll praise, and I'll thank God every day for every blessing he's ever given me. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing me to bring these words to those who want to listen and listen to what you said. I know, Father, we are so so hard to let our burdens go and give it all to you. 
and we realize that that is simply Satan fighting us and telling us that no matter what we do, it's not going to get better. Your word does simply tell us, pray, sing praises to your name, and you can let us know that, hey, I've got this, and in faith, we trust that you do. Father, I ask that if somebody's listening has not found you as their personal Savior, that you allow the Holy Spirit to enter them and they may find truth and deliverance and eternity within you. For this I ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks everybody for listening, and I'll see you next time.